Wonderful. Um, great. So again, a warm welcome to everyone. I know we have people from all over the country and if you're willing, I encourage you to put in the chat your name and where you're calling from. We would love to know who's here. Um, and as we've mentioned a few times, we'll be sending the recording and the links to those who couldn't join live and those who are here. So you don't have to worry about capturing everything in the moment. Um, but I'm just really excited that we could offer this uh, event um, with so many great partners. And so I want to introduce two of our co-sponsors here tonight. Um, first, I would like to introduce Lauren Hogan, who's a Managing Director of Policy and Professional Advancement at the National Association for the Education of Young Children. Um, Lauren and her team were really instrumental in making this happen, so a lot of gratitude. And for those who don't know the National Association for the Education of Young Children, it's a professional membership organization that works to promote high quality learning for all young children, birth through eight, by connecting early childhood practice, policy, and research. Um, so I'll hand it off to you, Lauren, to talk a little bit about why you're all supporting this work. Thanks, Julia. And thank you so much to all the educators and advocates and allies who are taking time today, whether you're live and today is live or today is watching on the recording later um, with all that you have going on and all that's going on in the world to learn more about the child tax credit and how it can benefit you and the families that you work with. Um, we were really grateful to have this opportunity to partner with everybody because, you know, in some of our own advocacy work, NAYC has been more likely, given our mission and our work, to talk about childcare and the childcare tax credit, which for those of you keeping track at home is not the same as the child tax credit, but we could do a whole other webinar on that. At the same time, we embrace all policies and practices and investments that support the well being of children and families because that work is integral and foundational to the work of early childhood education and educators. And you all have such deep and meaningful relationships across states and settings with the families that you work with. And we've turned to you and those relationships so many times to talk about everything from the census to now child tax credit, thinking about how to navigate through the opportunity and through some of the challenges that it takes to, to benefit from this really important support. And this is also an opportunity for so many folks to be able to learn how as early childhood educators with families, you can take advantage of it for your own families as well, because we know it's both cases. So many of us are educators and families and parents all at the same time. We know the CTC has had tremendous benefits in lifting families out of poverty and helping them make ends meet during what has been an extraordinarily challenging and traumatic time for so many. We're super proud to be part of the effort in support of children and families and I'm really appreciative to all the great partners um, who joined us for this effort and particularly the Partnership for America's Children and the Coalition on Human Needs for their leadership and expertise in this space. So thank you all so much for being here. And Julia, I'll turn it back to you. Great, thank you so much, Lauren. Really appreciate it. Um, and then I'm really excited to introduce Anne Hedgepeck, who is a Deputy, Deputy Chief of Policy at Child Care Aware. Um, and I think, again, many of you are very familiar with Child Care Aware, um, but they work with a national network of more than 400 child care resource and referral agencies and other partners to ensure that all families have access to quality, affordable child care. And so I'll pass it over to you, Anne. Thanks, Julia. And I'll start by echoing Lauren and saying thanks to the Partnership for America's Children and the Coalition on Human Needs for bringing this together. It's a great excuse tonight or over a recording to all be in the same virtual room and learn about something that's integral to the economic security of the families that we work with and um, that we are and the communities that we are. As many of you all know, Child Care Aware of America is so fortunate to connect with families, educators, child care providers, and the child care resource and referral agencies that are our members. And all of you, like us, are thinking about the well being of the families that you work with um, and the children that you work with. And the reality is that. 
the really funding that made the child tax credit uh, expansion possible um, is a tremendous positive impact on families. And it, at the end of the day, I know I'm thinking about how we can't leave that money on the table, that money that could help families afford child care or put food on their table or pay rent. Um, this may be your story and it may be the story of so many of the folks that you work with. So thank you for taking the time to learn with me tonight. Um, I'll be listening and thinking about ways we can use this information in our efforts. And I'll mention that CCAOA is making some resources available. We have a new fact sheet on our site about some of the various tax credits that will intersect with the families and the programs that we're involved with. So, uh, so many partners, so much great information, um, and thanks again for joining. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anne, to you and to Lauren. Um, and I just wanted to take a second and thank other um, co-hosts of this event, including the National Association for Family Child Care and Zero to Three. So thank you all. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and share our screen, Zoe, if you're able to do that and get started with our training. And again, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat. I'm just going to say again, in case some folks join late, if you want to listen in Spanish, you'll hit the globe and choose Spanish for interpretation. I'm just going to say that in Spanish because um, they might not be on the line. Si alguien entró tarde, eh, tienen que escoger el símbolo del globo y escoger el idioma español. Oh, sorry, I forgot to change. Okay, great. So um, we're here to talk about claiming the 2021 expanded child tax credit. And we can go to the next slide. Um, we're here along with the great co-sponsors with the Coalition on Human Needs, which is a national group of organizations that advocates for families and children at the federal level. And if we go to the next slide, um, you'll see we're also here with the Partnership for America's Children which has 50 members in 40 states um, and supports various child care, child related policies at the state and national level. Go to the next slide, please. So what is the 2021 expanded child tax credit? The child tax credit isn't new, but last year it was expanded as part of the American Rescue Plan. Um, and what this meant is more money, but also that 90% of kids in the US are now eligible. Um, and I think it was Lauren who said before that today's training is really designed to help all of you as providers and those working in child care and early education to help other families claim this credit. But as parents or guardians, you may also be eligible for this. And so we hope that tonight serves a dual purpose of supporting you in getting the money to which you're entitled and also supporting the families that you work with. So with the expansion, the credit was increased to $3,600 for kids under the age of six and for $3,000 for kids age six through 17. A really significant part of the expansion is that there's no minimum income requirement. So a family has no earned income, they're still eligible for the full credit and it's fully refundable, which means that even if they don't owe taxes, they can get that full amount of $3,000 to $3,600 per child. We can go to the next slide, please. So we'd just like to give an example of um, how much money we're talking about because it's, it's significant. So in a family, perhaps a family that um, goes to your center, uh, they have an adult and then three kids aged four, 13, and 15. If they file tax um, returns, the total amount of the child tax credit they'll get if they haven't claimed any already is $9,600. And that's in addition to potential stimulus payments they haven't claimed and other state and federal credits. So really a kind of significant amount of money. We can go to the next slide. And so the challenge is that while this will help so many families, there are at least 4 million kids and some estimate much more at risk of missing out on the CTC or the child tax credit if their parents or guardians don't file taxes this year. 
And so these include families with no or very low incomes who are not required to file taxes generally and so might not have done so recently or ever. And also families who might have concerns about filing taxes or claiming benefits, for example, related to immigration. And so we wanna really work with trusted community organizations and trusted messengers to reach these families so that they know that there is this credit and this is how they can claim it. Um, and we really are looking to all of you as childcare providers and early education providers and those working in these areas to get out the word because we know families look to you and trust you. Um, and I wanna say at the outset that you don't have to be a tax expert to help families claim this credit. And we can go to the next slide. So who's eligible for the expanded CTC? Um, adults must may have a social security number or what's known as an individual tax base, sorry, individual taxpayer identification number or ITIN. Um, and children must have social security numbers, but as long as the parents um, or uh, guardians have an ITIN and the kids have an SSN, they can claim this benefit. The dependent must be the adult's child, including adopted, grandchild, or stepchild, also a younger steps, younger sibling, step-sibling, half-sibling, or their descent, or a foster child placed by a government agency. And the dependent must have lived with the adult in the U.S. for more than half the year, there are some exceptions to this. So if a baby was born in December 2021, the parents can still claim that child um, for the full amount of the credit. Um, the dependent didn't, couldn't have provided over half of their own support and a child must be considered a dependent for tax filing purposes. And so how do families claim the 2021 CTC? So last year, most families, maybe many of you, automatically received advanced CTC payments, which were $250 to $300 per child per month between July and December. But regardless of whether people received those advanced payments or they didn't receive those payments, they'll have to file a full tax, they'll have to file a tax return this year. And when they file that tax return, they'll be able to claim either the second half of the child tax credit to which they're entitled, or if they haven't gotten any advance payments, that full amount. Um, and families were gonna need help understanding why they should file and how to get help filing. You can go to the next slide, please. So this is a little, um, we have this, I couldn't uh, figure out how to format this in English and Spanish on the same slide. So we have this in English. And then when we send out the link, you'll see this in Spanish as well. But the tax filing season began at the end of January. And now um, really most volunteer income tax assistance sites are open and we'll talk more about those. Many of you might have heard of April 18th as a tax filing deadline. But for those um, this year who are heads of households with incomes below $18,800 or married couples filing together who make 25,100 or less, they actually aren't required to file by April 18th and can continue to do so um, through 2022. Um, and those who are required could also request an extension. And in May, something known as a simplified online filing portal will open and this will be an option for people who can't get through the full tax filing process to claim the child tax credit and likely the third stimulus payment. Um, but at this point, we're really encouraging people to file a full tax return because this is how you can get the money the fastest. And it's also the best way of claiming all of the different benefits to which you're entitled. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, this is in Spanish. So free tax assistance. Fortunately, as I said, you don't have to be a tax expert. You certainly don't have to do people's taxes for them. And there's a lot of resources where you can send people for help and we'll be sending all of this out after so you can um, get the links and, and copy and paste them. So you can identify um, what the local VITA site, so those that can help you file taxes. Um, a household to receive this usually has to have below $58,000. And if you go to this link, you're able to put in your zip code and find the nearest VITA site. And this is available in English and in Spanish. And 
we know many people will prefer to go in person to a site, bring their documents there, but there are other options through Get Your Refund, um, which is a website that was created by an organization called Code for America in partnership with the IRS. And so at Get Your Refund, you can also access free do-it-yourself self-tax filing services or get free online help with an opportunity to talk to a tax specialist over the phone. And for those who can't get through the full filing process, they'll be notified um, if they go there of when the simplified portal Get CTC opens. Um, we have this in Spanish as well. You can go to the next slide. Um, there also is a resource known as low income taxpayer clinics. And so this is for if someone has a dispute with the IRS, this is a good place to send them. And if you go to this link, you can identify um, low income taxpayer clinics near you. One thing we recommend is that before sending a client or a family member or going there yourself, that you call and ensure that they'll be able to support you um, with your given situation. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, and I don't want to go into this deeply, but I want to say that um, because adults um, can claim this using an ITIN, we know that some don't have an ITIN yet and will need to apply. And so our toolkit and the slide include different options for doing so, but we really encourage people um, to get their copies of their important documents certified in person rather than mailing it in. Unfortunately, the wait time for getting an ITIN is weeks, if not months, and so it's a lengthy process. Um, and so we really encourage people getting started on that process, and then they'll be able to um, claim their taxes and, and get this benefit. And again, if you go into the toolkit, which Alini, my colleague Alini will share later, you'll see more resources, including a really great fact sheet on the ITIN. I think the next slide is this same information in Spanish. And so with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Deb to keep um, going. Thank you, Julia. So families are entitled to get the child tax credit if they file a full tax return, which is what we are encouraging them to do. There are other credits they can get as well. One of those is the earned income tax credit, which was also expanded for this year. And another is the child and dependent care tax credit, which essentially reimburses people to up for, up for about half the cost of paying for childcare while they work and which Lauren referred to. The cumulative effect of claiming all of these credits for a family that did work and had to pay for childcare can be quite high. And that's even more true if they also live in a state which has a state EITC or a state childcare credit. So we're really encouraging families to go ahead and file a full tax return now we can be talking about $20,000 or more for the tax year of 2021. It's an enormous amount of money that can help families take critical steps to stabilize their income and, and in, make investments that will help them moving forward. And they can do that, as Julia said, by working with one of these VITA sites. One thing Julia didn't mention that I do wanna make clear is that if you are working with people who do not speak English, all of the VITA sites have access to a phone line that will translate for them. Many of them have Spanish speakers, but if your um, families speak other languages, call the VITA site and ask if they have a use the translation phone line. Most of them do, and you can probably send them even if they speak um, Haitian or any one of dozens and dozens of other languages, and they still can get helped because they use that translation service. Next slide, please. The other thing that you may want to either give your families before they go to the FIDA site, or if you're really working closely with them, maybe help them prepare, is a list of the documents they need to bring to get their taxes done. Um, and we're not going to go through that list, but when you get our slides for today, you will have the link to go to to see all the documents that families need to bring. Um, the other thing about making an appointment, which Julia didn't mention, is if the couple is married and they're going to file a tax return together, they both need to go to that appointment because they are both going to need to sign the forms. So if you're encouraging them to make a phone call and get a VITA site appointment, tell them to make sure they do it at a time when they can both be there. Next slide, please. 
there are a couple of very important things to know about this credit that a lot of families worry about. One of those is they're afraid that if they get this credit, they're going to have to list it as income and it's going to reduce their access to other federal benefits. It won't. For purposes of any federal benefit, it does not count as income and they will keep getting their social security or their SSI or their SNAP or their childcare subsidies, which is very important, of course, to you guys, or their Medicaid or child um, children's health insurance program benefits, their health insurance or their WIC. It doesn't count as income. And so they can get this big chunk of money and still get the federal benefits they need month by month to get by. Next slide. The other question that many families have and that you're gonna to wanna to be able to answer is what does this mean for their immigration status? Families that are not documented may be afraid that if they file for this credit, it's going, the, the information about their, their um, immigration status will get turned over to um, ICE. It won't. There are literally millions of people every year who file taxes using an ITIN, using that tax number, which you use when you don't have a social security number. And it's a very safe process. The IRS has very strict rules that they do not pass this information on. They have a very limited set of circumstances where they share information and it's usually a criminal investigation or establishing what their tax um, obligations are. For people who are documented, they're often afraid that it will somehow prevent them from getting a green card, or maybe if they have a green card, that it will prevent them from getting citizenship. They're concerned that the tax credit will be considered a public charge that prevents them from ultimately um, getting that green card or citizenship. And again, it does not affect their immigration status. It does not count as a public charge. So whether they are documented or undocumented, they can safely claim their child tax credit and their other taxes, and they don't have to worry about their immigration status. Next slide, please. So I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Alini, who is going to talk about a toolkit we've prepared that makes it very easy for you to help families understand that they really are eligible for this credit and connect them to the people who can who are experts on taxes and can help them file their tax returns. Um, I think Julia mentioned that when we started this work, we did a number of focus groups with families who were eligible for the credit but had not claimed it. And so we were able to learn what their fears and concerns were and why they hadn't claimed the credit. And our toolkit builds in the answers to that so it should make it easier to persuade people. Um, and so Alini, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And Julia, if you would be so kind as to put the link to the toolkit in the chat, that'd be great. Alini? Great, thank you, Deb. Um, so as Deb mentioned, I'm gonna be going over our toolkit and also discussing um, some outreach strategies, techniques, things we found useful that, and, um, that we've also included resources on if you wanna also conduct uh, various types of outreach. Um, as you're moving forward and connecting with families. Um, next slide. So first thing um, we can talk about is uh, one form of uh, outreach, which can be simply sending mass text messages, conducting robocalls or emails. Texts have proven to be especially effective. Uh, it's also helpful to communicate to families through a combination of methods. So this or all three of these uh, can be useful. And it, what you see on the screen are two different scripts we have for from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. One is a text script um, and one is a voice message script. Both of these are included in uh, our toolkit and um, ready to use if you want to implement either of these in reaching out to families. Next slide. And here we have it in Spanish, yep. Um, another great option is to record a phone hold message or a video message for waiting room office screens, especially if these already exist. 
Um, and again, here's another sample script or uh, a hold message from Center and Budget and Policy Priorities uh, that you can also use or tailor for uh, your programs and organizations. Next slide. Okay. We also have a variety of different flyers in our toolkit. Um, here you see two samples. One is a sample flyer from GMMB. Uh, the other is, for, again, from Center uh, for Budget and Policy Priorities. Um, you know, hanging posters in waiting rooms and other public spaces, distributing flyers, sending home flyers and backpacks um, is something already that many organizations do. And so in our toolkit, we already have these ready to print flyers, uh, many of them available in multiple languages that, that you can access and use to distribute and share with families. Next slide. Uh, another great option is to add CTC related questions on already existing intake forms if families are already filling something out when they're coming in. Um, adding a question or two can help identify who um, might want or need more information on the CTC, as well as providing intake workers with information on local VITA numbers or flyers um, that they can hand to families. Um, Add, you can also add flyers and FAQs to resources that are also already going out to families as well. This is a screenshot of the FAQ that we have uh, in our toolkit for providers um, and for organizations. It has a variety of different questions. We tried to cover as much as we possibly could. Um, and that's also gonna be accessible to you through the toolkit. Next slide. Uh, we also encourage wherever partners have relationships uh, with state and local benefit agencies or school districts, encouraging them to also send out mass communications to beneficiaries and families around the CTC and how they can get help. These agencies and schools uh, are known and have been known as trusted resources and spaces for families. So combining that relationship that already exists with information on the CTC can be really helpful in getting people interested, curious, and wanting to learn more about, uh, about the CTC and how to take next steps. Next slide. Additionally, you can also send out a message in a regular newsletter, post on social media. These are example social media posts um, from a partner toolkit. Um, we also in our toolkit have uh, links to resources just like this if you're interested in, um, in conducting this kind of outreach as well. Next slide. Um, you can also hold a phone bank or conduct peer-to-peer -peer texting. Um, also hosting Q&A with tax specialists, immigration attorney, or other subject matter experts. Um, it's helpful to provide families um, when possible with access to information from specialists, just like these, especially uh, as we talked about immigration concerns earlier. Families are gonna want to know more, um, especially as they realize that this is something that they can access if they hadn't known before. So being able, where possible, being able to conduct in person or via Zoom or Facebook Live with experts like this, or just a QA and a in general can be really helpful in outreach and supporting families. Next slide. Additionally, you can help families schedule VITA appointments. Um, we'll have information on VITA sites or how to locate VITA sites in your area. Um, uh, the ability to, as we mentioned, we're not looking to make anyone a tax expert, so we want everybody to utilize VITA um, while they're open and helping families to go from the space of knowing that they could qualify for this to then going to an appointment where somebody can actually help them file their tax returns uh, can be really helpful. Um, so taking that extra step is always um, a good way to connect families to the next step. Also working in collaboration with local tax sites and partners um, to make tax prep services available and organizing tax filing or document preparation events if that's within your capacity would also be a great strategy and a great way to conduct further outreach to get people connected to the CTC. Next slide. And this is a list 
of all the different things that are in our toolkit. Uh, as I mentioned, we have flyers and posters, we have messaging and press materials, um, FAQs, uh, social media toolkit, we have scripts on call, text, whole line, and newsletter copy. Um, we have materials on how to help pick a tax preparer and get ready for appointments, resources for immigrant families, and, and much more. And this is, once you have the link, this is a living, breathing document. So as we get more information, we add it to the toolkit. You'll also notice that in the toolkit, it is available in, we have resources available in Spanish, and those are highlighted in red. And we also have resources available in multiple languages, and there's a little globe next to each item where you will find multiple language uh, languages available in those resources. Next slide. And if you're interested, you can uh, sign up for our listserv. Um, we send out information on updates on the toolkit, as I just mentioned, also any sort of trainings that are open to the public. Uh, and any updates and changes that come up with the child tax credit, um, uh, you'll get that through the listserv. Next slide. And if you're interested and want to connect more, um, you can um, email my lovely co-host, Julia. Her email is there. Um, and I'm sure she'll put that in the chat as well. And that's that, I think. I'm not sure if we are putting the poll in um, at this time. I believe so. Okay. So um, we are interested in learning a little bit about uh, you and how you might use what we've produced and even more importantly for us, what we didn't produce that might make it easier for you to help families claim these credits. So I'm gonna ask our colleague Zoe to put up a quick poll for you to respond to. Um, and it's in English and Spanish, as you can see. And if you can just take a minute or two to answer it, and then we'll share the results so you can see them. Can people see it? Um, if you can't see it, let us know because I'm not seeing people answering yet. Can anyone tell me if they see the poll? Oh, yeah, now people are answering, so they should be okay. We'll just give people a little more time to read it. I know there's a lot of questions in there and then we'll share our results. Okay, Zoe, can you go ahead and share the results, please? Um, I have to say, I'm thrilled by these results. It looks like many of you either are doing this work or plan to start or will consider it. And it also looks like there's a nice range of which of our materials are useful for you. Um, the other thing I would like to ask you to do is to take a moment to put in the chat anything that we didn't list that you would find helpful. And we're also very interested in knowing how many people you're likely to be reaching out to. So if you're running a childcare program that has 30 families, you could tell us that. If you're lead, you know, the outreach worker for the Head Start program with 200 families, we'd like to know that. Just trying to get a sense of how many families you're reaching. And if you can just pop that in the chat, that would be great. 
And then what we'll do is we will go on to take and answer some of the questions that we got. Um, so I'm gonna uh, go back to the questions that were posed above and we will try and answer them. Um, I, there was one question that Julia, I think said you, we would get to later. Did you already answer that in the presentation? Um, I didn't. And so I think the question, and if people want to say out loud their own question, you can either come on camera or do the hand raising symbol, um, and then we'll unmute you. So I'll read this, but if anyone wants to ask someone else, um, there's a question about Penn Paroles. Okay, I'm just going to unmute you. That'd be better. Actually, I wonder. I can answer that actually, Julia. Okay. And that'd be um, great. Um, and I think Carwin just wanted to. Can, okay, perfect. You should be able to speak now if you want to yes. say in the depth. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, I'm a uh, case worker with uh, IRC International Rescue Committee. As uh, most of you may be aware of the situation in Afghanistan and the evacuation program after August 15, we have a huge number of clients that been uh, rescued and evacuated and landed through different uh, camps in the uh, United States. But now uh, they get like day by day, week by week, uh, they leave the camp and uh, reside anywhere in the United States. In California, in the Bay Area, Oakland, IRC office assisting those clients with the resettlement, with uh, other services. And I am myself uh, in charge of passing like finance question answering and uh, providing assistance. And I have clients asking me if they can apply for child tax credits, which they don't have any uh, permanent documentation, no green card, uh, but they are like parolees on their passport for two years, one year. And they hear uh, most of them, they still did not receive their work authorization or social security, and they cannot look for a job. They are in finance hardship. So what will be the answer for me to these clients? So the answer, I'm afraid, is that they are not eligible for the credit this year, but it has nothing to do with their immigration status. It has to do with the fact that to get the credit, you have to have been living in the country, the child and the adult have to be living together in the United States for at least six months in a day. And pretty much all the Afghan refugees, I believe, came in in August. And so they were not here for six months in a day in 2021. It would have to be within 2021. If you have any people who were paroled into the United States before July 1st, and had a baby in this country who has a, a, a citizenship, then even though the parents are parolees, they could get the credit. But for anyone who came into the country, who has been in the country less than six months in a day, or whose child was not born in this country and isn't a US citizen, doesn't have a social security number, then they can't. Does that make sense? Was that clear? Yeah, thank you. The, the time uh, span is clear. I got that. Thank you. And so it's only for the children who are citizens. Not it's for... only for the children who have social security numbers. And typically when the adults do not have immigration status, but the kids do, it's because they are citizens and were born here. There are some weird cases where they got a, a the children were admitted through another lawful mechanism and got a social security number, but it's pretty rare. So the citizenship is not required as long as they have uh, social, the children have social security and left over six months right. in the United States. And what if, what if some of them already filed through VETA and uh, any other resources? Would there Sorry, be, if, an, they, are, if, if they, are, they already filed their taxes? I mean, and they tried to claim the credit? Correct, yes. Um, the IRS will probably tell them that they're not eligible and okay. revise it 
but if the IRS pays them the credit, you should advise them that the IRS will probably catch the mistake and require them to pay it back. And so they probably Thank don't you. want to spend that money. Yeah, that's what I advise them for those who are ready. Thank you very much. It was very informative. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, Maria, I see your hand up. I think you can unmute. Or do we need to unmute you? Oh, yeah. Great. Hi. Um, I have a training agency for childcare providers. And I also and I also work with parents uh, with uh, most uh, Latino families and Latino providers. And I think all this information they had to be it's very important for the families and the providers share with their parents. My um, network red is more than a hundred uh, providers. And my question is how, how I can reach somebody for we can, I can share this information or I can share by myself. Or somebody can come and put the training together for, for the providers. Are you wondering if we can do a training for your group of providers? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, just, just yeah, the same thing like uh, right now, like this session. Yeah, and we're happy to do additional training. So if you have a network um, and you know we're also recording this, but especially if you have a group that missed it, we're happy to do these trainings in English or Spanish or Portuguese. Um, and so you could just email my emails in the chat, Maria, if you wanna, I'll put it in there again. And um, depending on where you are, Alini or I will reach out okay. about scheduling a time to talk to them. Um, so, I just put my email again in the chat and then we're happy to talk about scheduling a time to connect with your providers. Okay, thank you so much. I will, I'm going to, I'm going to read you. Bye. Okay, perfect. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. These are great questions. Um, are there other questions? People can either put them in the chat or uh, raise your hand or come on camera and then we can answer. Um, I know one person had asked for the toolkit and that's in the chat. And I also put a toolkit or resource we're sharing with schools in case any of you are connected um, with K through 12 schools as well and encourage you to share that. Um, but we'll give it a minute if anyone has additional questions or if any of you have already been doing connecting families to the credit and wanna share what's worked for you or what's been challenging, we also welcome that. So go ahead and put something in the chat or raise your hand. So if we don't have more questions, everybody who registered for this webinar will get the slides and the recording. You are certainly free to show the recording to staff. As Julia said, we're also happy to come and do a webinar so long as it's a, you know, a reasonable number of people who would listen. Um, and Maria's group certainly would fall in that category. Um, we have on listserv, which was also in the slides, where you can get notice of additional outreach materials as we prepare them. And so I do encourage you also to sign up for that listserv. And in particular, when you're signed up for that listserv, you'll get a notice when that simplified portal that makes it very easy for people to just claim the credit goes online in May. And that will be another good time to reach out to families. Julia has just popped that email list bitly in the chat. So we very much hope that this has been helpful to you and that you will work with your families to help them claim this credit. We really believe it is uh, potentially life-changing for many of these families to have access to this money. It is their resource. It is their support for their families. We hope that eventually Congress will extend this expanded tax credit 
into the future years, but even if it's only this year, we wanna make sure every family gets the money that is coming to them. And with that, I don't know um, if uh, Lauren or Anne wanna say any final words or Alini. Um, I'll give you a moment to do it, but if you don't, then we'll say thank you and we'll stop the recording. Just a quick thank you to everybody and all the great questions and information. This has been really rich and we're excited to share it out there, the recording out as well. Oh, thank you so much for doing that. Thanks, Lauren. Thank